Hello everyone. I have a Patreon channel where I give live classes three times a week, three weeks, every month. Be sure to click the link in the description and join. Thank you. Okay, so let's look at this mnemonic for adrenergic agonist. So did pen. Okay, so let's go over the rules we need to follow here to make this mnemonic work. Rule number one. First, we identify the catecholamines. Okay, let's remember. So monoamines are these specific types of neurotransmitters, but here we're focusing on the catecholamine type, which you will find on this list, D-E-N, dopamine, epinephrine, and norepinephrine. Any catecholamine that we see on this list at high dosages, at high dosages, will bind alpha-1, okay? So let me repeat, catecholamines will bind alpha-1 at high dosages. Doesn't matter if it's dopamine, epinephrine, or norepinephrine. It will have affinity for alpha-1. That's the first rule. So let's take a look. Here I put alpha-1. Pen is generally categorized under alpha-1. So phenylephrine has affinity for alpha-1. Now, epinephrine and norepinephrine are part of the DEN group, the catecholamine group. So at higher dosages, both will have affinity to alpha-1. Now, norepinephrine already has affinity for alpha-1 regardless of the dose. But it also favors beta-1 followed by beta-2. Now let's understand the exceptions. I'm going to circle the exceptions with a green circle. If you look at epinephrine, E looks like a B. So epinephrine favors beta receptors. Typically, at a low dose, you'll see that epinephrine favors beta-1, beta-2, and then alpha-1. Now if we take a look at this side where it says did. They're favoring beta-1. Dolbutamine, beta-1 over beta-2, right? Has more affinity for beta-1. Isoproterenol. Iso meaning the same. So I'm going to say beta-1, the same way it has affinity for beta-2. And then pro for proactive. So I'm going to say agonist, right? Proactive. It's a non-selective beta agonist, right? And then we have the big exception here, dopamine. So just like we said before, epinephrine originally wanted to bind beta. At higher dosages, it binds alpha-1. So dopamine originally wants to bind dopamine, D1. But at higher dosages, dopamine will bind alpha. It'll have higher affinity for alpha-1. So I put it on the beta-1 side because the secondary affinity will always be beta-1. As you can see here, second place will always be beta-1. And look how it flips opposite directions. So at a low dose, it has its priority met. It binds dopamine, but at a higher dose, it's backwards, right? That's the rule of the catecholamines here, alpha, beta, dopamine. So mnemonics do work. Like if you look at the science behind it, the way our brain is designed, it's designed to remember things when we attach it to other things. And if you ever find yourself where you remember the mnemonic but forgot what that mnemonic really meant, that just means that you have to practice the mnemonic. Mnemonics are not these things that you just memorize once and you have them for life. Sometimes, especially in medicine, you do require a little bit of practice. So this is one mnemonic that does require a little bit of practice. And the mnemonic is did pen. So did pen. Now I just remembered a whole big list. I can just say, okay, well, the pen is alpha. Phenylephrine has affinity for alpha-1. This is epinephrine. This is norepinephrine. These are monoamines. Then, dopamine, epinephrine, and norepinephrine. Monoamines follow the rule. In high dosages, they would always bind alpha-1 first. Now, if the rule is no longer there, they're going to bind what they were meant to bind. Epinephrine looks like a B, so it's going to bind beta. So it'll have more affinity to beta than it does to alpha at the level of normal or low dosages. Norepinephrine, alpha-1. Regardless, low dose, heavy dose, however, alpha one, and then the beta one, and then beta two. So it goes that route. All right, and then did. This is what we said it was beta one we put. We said, well, dopamine was the weird one. So and dopamine is the second one for dopamine. Dopamine is a catecholamine. So first place, alpha one, that's at high dosages. And then we said right now, beta one, second place always. And then dopamine. So take a look at that. That's at high dosages. At lower dosages, it flips dopamine, beta, and then alpha. It flips around. Isoproternal, this is too easy because the word iso means the same. So beta 1, beta 2, the same. And then pro is 
agonist as an agonist on this receptor. And the last one, uh, dolbutamine, more beta-1 than beta-2. Kind of reminds me of phenylephrine. It's just not so complex. It's a lot easier. Dolbutamine. So that's a nice way to try to remember things. That's another thing I do with all my lectures. Whenever I give a lecture, I will come back and give you a mnemonic for you to try to memorize it. Some of the mnemonics are going to be more complex, like this one. This one's really complex because you have to actually practice it a little bit. Hey, everyone. Thank you for watching the video. If you got this far, I do have a surprise for you. Right now, if you subscribe to my Patreon, you get a free one-on-one -on -one session. You actually get to choose the topic. This is limited time and this is limited space. First come, first serve. Until next time, remember to click like and subscribe. And thank you again.